My name is uh, Robert Dale Rogers and uh, I have a long history of interest in plants. I actually am a botanist who became a herbalist and uh, I've studied plant medicine for about 40 years. Um, recently, uh, in the last decade or so, I became more interested in uh, my fungal friends around me, uh, mainly due to having a clinical practice where I used to suggest turkey tail or reishi and other uh, mushroom extracts to some of my oncology uh, patients who who were undergoing chemotherapy or radiation and I I noted with great uh, satisfaction the uh, high degree of efficacy that the mushrooms provided to their immune systems. So I became more interested and I started to look around and joined a local mycological society and and started to find that a lot of the medicinal mushrooms were right in my region. So that got me interested and I started writing a book. And Ten years later I, I uh, published a book called The Fungal Pharmacy, uh, articulating some of the background, some of the med medicinal uh, uses of these mushrooms for health and well-being. And in the course of all of this I found uh, interesting things. For example, there's a guesstimated 1.4 million species of, of fungi on the planet. It's hard to believe. Uh, less than 10% of those, about 140,000, are actually given names. And another 10% of those, or about 14,000, actually are well known and uh, um, perhaps another 400 to 600 are well known for edibility and medicinal purpose. So the world of, of uh, fungi, the kingdom of fungi, which by the way was only really founded about uh, 50 years ago, until early, earlier before 1970, they were only considered really the animal and plant kingdoms and, and fungi were included in that particular kingdom. And then as things started to divide, uh, uh, the fifth kingdom uh, of fungi came into being and uh, is recognized today as its own distinct kingdom. Uh, the, the mushrooms themselves, they, they of course need to rely on other um, uh, plants for their sustenance, but in turn, the mushrooms also provide mycorrhizal uh, benefit to the root hairs of plants and trees to provide nutrients and water in exchange for sugar. That's the deal they make. And because of that symbiosis and because of that relationship, we have this really integr integrated mycelium network all over the planet. Wherever there are soils, underneath you will find fungal masses of organism that occasionally will fruit up. And you, oh, and you can see all the, you see here, can you see all the mycorrhizal, all this white tissue, do you see that? That's the actual living organism, part of. It's all through the woods here. It's all through this wood, it's all through under the ground, it's connecting trees to tree. The mycorrhizal world is actually why uh, you know many people actually believe that plants are a symbiont of fungi. Right around us we have on trees here we have a number of different uh, fungi that are actually uh, coming out of this uh, conifer and uh, on that particular mushroom you'll notice that there's a sweating that is on the ex exterior of the, uh, the uh, red belted conch uh, a process called gutation and that gutation is really when you when you taste it it has a salty bitter flavor um, the red belted conch is a great medicinal mushroom has been used traditionally for uh, all kinds of inflammatory conditions and I find it specifically useful for individuals who have that deep-seated cold arthritic condition of the joints for helping warm up lubricate and, uh, and help to uh, allow for more expansion and uh, uh, flexibility. 
Uh, it is warming and stimulating as a, as a mushroom extract, so care must be taken by people who tend to have a fairly hot constitution or women in menopause, etc. And there's mushrooms all around me on these trees. These are all, in this case, the red belted conchs, but they're all uh, examples of, in the process of basically degrading the cellulose that is in trees. One of the mechanisms of this uh, process is they will actually break these trees down right into uh, ready compost for, for allowing for the growth of other uh, plants and trees. So not only are mushrooms degraders, and one of the reasons why many of the enzymes that are in them, including lactases, are used for uh, breaking down pulp and paper, used for uh, cleaning up or degrading uh, uh, dyes that are used for clothing, a number of those kinds of uses as well. One of the things about mushrooms that's very interesting and exciting to me is that they also have the ability to break down and degrade uh, petroleum products for cleaning up oil and gas well spills and for uh, degrading areas that have been mined and uh, uh, contaminated with heavy metals. Mushrooms also have a great role to play in not only food for animals but also for humans. You may notice in the, in the wild sometimes when you're walking you'll notice that mushrooms have been picked and they're hanging on branches uh, in conifers or hanging on branches close to the trunk and those were put there by squirrels. In fact, uh, up to 25% of squirrels' winter uh, diet can, can be composed from mushrooms. Uh, mushrooms are uh, add a great variety to our, uh, our diet and it can compose anywhere up to 30% protein uh, in some cases. And of course, mushrooms are very useful for, for medicine. Uh, one of my things that I really love to uh, uh, educate people about is how to use mushrooms for medicine, how to prepare the mushrooms, and how to utilize them for various health conditions, including chronic disease. Well, you know, nothing more fun than going out in the wild and picking wild herbs and mushrooms. And, but, you know, there are a few cautions to be aware of. I mean, one of the things that about mushrooms is that there is a great variety and they are difficult to name two species. Uh, highly recommend it would be uh, for everyone who is watching this film to, to join a local mycological society, go out with local experts and, and learn which ones are choice edibles, if that's your world, or medicinals. Uh, I started out that way basically. I didn't know much about mushrooms at all and I found that after I learned five or six a year each summer, after a while I had built up 60 or 70 that were, were choice edibles and medicinals and uh, I stick to those, those mainly now. I mean, uh, one of the things about mushrooms is that some of them are uh, toxic, some will actually kill you. Uh, the death uh, angel or destroying angel uh, has toxins in it that, you know, you eat it. And about eight hours later, you feel very uh, ill and maybe have some gastrointestinal problems, headaches, etc. Uh, and then you feel okay. But what's going on really is that after about two or three days of no symptoms, your kidneys and your liver actually. Uh, die and you die as well. The destroying angel or the death cap, the, uh, the various uh, Amanita mushrooms that are uh, very toxic to the liver and kidneys, uh, have some anecdotes. The most uh, popular one in Europe is psilobinin, which is an injectable uh, liquid that uh, at the present time is not easily available in North America, uh, should be more widely available as it has saved lives. Um, this uh, extract from milk thistle uh, is most effective as an intravenous 
and if not available, then massive amounts of the uh, oral ingested capsules may be helpful, but not as, are not as good as the psilobinin that is associated with intravenous. So some mushrooms, if they're prepared improperly, uh, can cause a lot of gastrointestinal um, distress. And even some mushrooms that are considered edible, uh, if you eat too many of them at, at an initial uh, consumption, you may find that you also have a bit of a uh, reaction as well. Doesn't mean you're necessarily allergic to the mushrooms, it means you have a sensitivity and you may have to be careful. So it really is important to be able to name the mushroom. I know that a lot of people really steer away from learning Latin, but there are some reasons why uh, people who are amateur mycologists uh, and who love mushrooms learn a little Latin so they can communicate with each other effectively. Having said that, many mushrooms are uh, our choice uh, edibles and uh, in fact with very very few exceptions they should all be cooked. I know many people buy the common agaricus button mushrooms whether the, the white or the criminis or the portobellas from their local food store all right, so this is a uh, button mushroom. This is the agaricus, uh, criminy, and then the larger one that you see is called a portobello. They're all the same species. Uh, these are a choice edible, uh, found in your supermarket. Great organic mushroom. A couple of warnings, never eat these raw. Uh, there's a couple of uh, studies that have shown these are a great mushroom to add to the diet for helping lower blood sugar levels. And this mushroom contains a very interesting compound that is an aromatase inhibitor. That is, it helps prevent the proliferation of hormone sensitive cancers such as breast and prostate. So therefore, a uh, couple, of, couple of meals of this uh, week for those who are genetically predisposed or who are undergoing uh, predisposition with prostate or breast cancer treatments, this might be a great adjunct therapy. But a lot of those mushrooms actually should be thoroughly cooked. Uh, uh, they have an accumulative toxin in them that is only partially removed by heat, so it's very important to cook them thoroughly. Uh, it makes them taste better anyways. So. Uh, one of the things that, about mushrooms as well is that uh, the degree to which people have individual sensitivities varies. Some people, for example, uh, have a condition that is called favaism, where they have our Mediterranean descent and they get a kind of a pernicious anemia. Uh, morel, morel mushrooms, one of the choice mushrooms of the uh, uh, edible fungi world, are, are contraindicated in people who have this particular form of uh, uh, inherited uh, uh, predisposition. Uh, so there are cautions and cares both for edible and medicinal mushrooms.